Want to control your retro games in some pretty cool ways? I love the power glove. It's so bad. Yeah, sorry, Lucas. It's actually RetroArch that makes us the baddest gamer on the block. Let's check it out. At least in my case, controller remaps were one of the features I most underutilized for a long time. I lean toward making most of my control changes in the main settings area of RetroArch. But then I learned there were a number of practical and really neat things you could do with controller remaps. So I want to share some of those with you and hopefully give you further ideas of how you can use this feature. One of the simplest ways we can use a controller remap is to make minor button layout changes. For example, by default, the button assignments for the NES are horizontal, matching the original controller configuration but I prefer it to be vertical, like this. I just find it easier to press both buttons in combination this way. We can accomplish this by opening the quick menu, scroll down to controls, then port one controls. I'll change the A button to A, the X button to B, the Y button to Turbo B, and the B button to Turbo A. That likely sounded a bit confusing. But after you fiddle with it a few times and through some trial and error, you'll be able to get the button mappings you prefer. If we go to Manage Remap Files and select Save Core Remap File, this button layout will now load with every NES game. This next tip is also pretty simple but not widely known. In many four-player arcade games, the player one controls are connected to the leftmost character by default. But what if you want to play as the most emotionally supportive turtle? Yeah, you're excellent just the way you are. Just go into the quick menu, down to controls, then port one controls. Now change the mapped port to number two. All we're doing is telling RetroArch what port we want our input device connected to on the emulated machine. And here's the result. Here's another little fun thing you can do with four player arcade games. From the main menu, go to settings and then input, and then set port controls one through four to all use the same primary controller. And if you're like me and you don't have any friends, this lets you control all four players at once. Remember to change your controller settings back after you're done. This next one is a quirky variation on this same concept and can be used on two to four player games that use two buttons or less for each player. Again, from the main menu, go to settings, then input, and set port one and port two controls to both use your primary controller. Next, we'll go to the game quick menu, and then controls, port one controls. Make sure analog to digital is set to none. And I will now clear all the button mappings by selecting each one and either pressing square or X on the gamepad or delete on the keyboard. Then I map these specific keys. The back button to select, the start button to start, the left bumper to the B button, the left trigger to the A button, and then the left analog stick to joy up, down, left, and right, respectively. Now I go into port two controls and do something similar. Make sure analog to digital is off, clear the mappings, map back to select, start to start, except now I'm gonna map the right bumper to the B button, the right trigger to the A button, and the right analog to the joy up, down, left, and right, respectively. Essentially what we've done here is split our controller in half so that the left analog and shoulder buttons control player one and the right analog and shoulder buttons control player two. If you've ever played the game Two Brothers, it employs this gameplay mechanic. I highly recommend that game, but make sure that if you do play it, you have some tissues nearby. <laughs> Playing as two players on one controller adds a new wrinkle to quite a few games. It requires quite a bit of dexterity, and as you can see, I'm not very good at it.
We can also take a single player game and make them multiplayer with some remapping tricks. To do this, we'll need two controllers connected to RetroArch. Then go to Main Menu, Settings, Input, and confirm that port 1 and port 2 controls are set to your primary and secondary game pads respectively. Now we go to the Game Quick Menu, then Controls, and make sure that port 1 and port 2 controls are both mapped to port 1. Now, back at port 1 controls, we clear all of the face button mappings by pressing square or X on your gamepad or delete on the keyboard. Head back over to port 2, and here we want to clear all of the directional pad mappings. In this instance, we're telling RetroArch we want both our controllers connected to port 1, with the first controller only having access to the directional pad and the second controller only having access to the buttons. So in a game like Gunsmoke, player 1 would control the directional movement and player 2 would control the timing and the direction of the firing. One last example I want to share and this is a good one because it reflects an actual situation that was presented by a user in the comments of another one of our videos and RetroArch remaps are able to solve this issue. It involves the arcade game Tapper, and it had a unique control layout where you pour drinks for patrons by means of a second joystick that looked like an actual tap. If you're emulating on PC, you use a button to pour drinks. But if you're emulating on a full-size cabinet, how might you mimic the more authentic arcade experience? We can do so with a controller remap. All we need to do is go into the quick menu controls. First, port 2 controls, and we'll change mapped port to 1. We do this because we're going to have the joystick for player 2 control the tap for player 1. To do so, I clear all the button assignments, and then select left analog down, and assign button 1, which is the tap button. I then go into port 1 controls, and clear the assignment for button one, the tap button, because I only want player two's joystick to control the tap. I can then save a game remap, so it only applies to this game, and let's see how it works. Even though I'm using two handheld controllers, I have to admit, it does feel a lot more natural playing this game using an analog joystick to pour the drinks. Maybe I should have been a bartender. Hmm. Like so many of the other settings in RetroArch, the sky is really the limit when it comes to how you want to configure controls. But I do hope I've given you a few new ideas on how you might add new life to some of your favorite games. Don't be afraid to experiment and try new things. And most important, be sure to have some fun. Until next time, happy gaming my friends.